بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب what is well known from the religion is that it's impermissible to backbite and speak evil of others and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns against this type of behavior in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all throughout the sunnah and I think that that's something well known and in a sahih hadith qala radiyallahu ta'ala anhu I believe it was uh, Abu Huraira or it was Ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah قال مر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على قبرين فقال إنهم إنهم لا يعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أهرهما فكان لا يستر من البو وأما الآخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was walking by some graves and he said verily those people are being punished. For uh, what for 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 major sins, but they are sins which the people take lightly, which people don't think are are major. And he said, as for one of them, they didn't used to clean themselves properly when using the restroom. Akramakum Allah. And as for the other, that they used to carry tales amongst the people in order to spread evil, meaning ghiba. So ghiba ayul ahbab, as the ulama describe related to this hadith, they define ghiba as carrying tales amongst the people in order to spread evil. That meaning that the person has an evil intent in spreading things around the community. Ayol Ahbab, when we look at the situation with Yasser Qadi and Nu'man Ali Khan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in them to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, that there's no way, or perhaps it's better not to say that, but perhaps it's better to say there are those who backbite them. But bi idnillah, we don't fall into that, inshallah ta'ala. And the reason being, because we don't speak against them in order to spread evil, nor to belittle them. We, I, I personally want good for them and would like the, the fact that they have a lot of youth that follow them. We would love for them to be calling the youth to the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the fahim and the salaf of this ummah. But the reason we speak about their mistakes and again, it's about the mistakes. I'm not speaking about, I don't care if he's from Pakistan, or he is an Asl from Pakistan, or he's from this, or his hair is like this, or his nose is like this. It's not why we speak about him. Nor do we speak about him because we want something from him, his wealth, or we want his popularity, or we want something from his dawah. But we speak about him, bi'idnillah, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. In order to warn, because the fact that so many people do listen to them, and they're making some very serious and evil mistakes. Serious, and I said evil, yes. Because when you have mistakes of this proportion in methodology, you are changing the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. You're making bid'ah, you know, a new madhab, a new methodology. Separate yourself from the scholars. All of these other statements that they make. Nu'man Ali Khan, his statements lead us to believe that aqidah is, is secondary, that we have bigger priorities. And he said we prioritize with the Qur'an, but in fact he's not prioritizing with the Qur'an in his statements. And may Allah guide him. Maybe he's come, out, come away from that statement, and we hope so. But in Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in him. So we don't do that in, in order to gain fame or fortune or position. 
But in fact, just as a duty for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, commanding the good and forbidding the evil, because they are spreading their mistakes outwardly. It's not something that they do in private in their homes. He's watching bad films. He's doing this. He's got this. And it's no one knows about it except for a few people. So they advise him. No. But they are going on the mimbar. They are speaking out to the people, speaking and spreading mistakes and spreading bid'ah. So it has to be spoken against from the bab of Amr bin Maruf and Nayyan al-Munkar. Because the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, not me, alayhi salatu wasalam, qal, من راى منكم منكرا في الغير هو بيد فإن لم يستطيف باللسانه فإن لم يستطيف في بقلبه وذلك عدو في الإيمان رواه مسلم. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in the hadith of Sa'id Sa'id hadith Sa'id bin Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه Sa'id al Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said whoever sees a good Whoever sees an evil, change it with his hand. Where, and if he's unable to do so, change it with his tongue. Speak out against it. And if he's unable to do that, then change it with his heart, meaning hating in his heart. And that's the weakest of faith. But they're all a part of Iman. So Ayyul Ahbab, from the Bab of Iman, wa akhawa, that we share these things in this message. And for those people who have the doubt and believe that this is not from the Sunnah of the Prophet because we just give you uh, Adilla Am, we just give you general evidence from from uh, the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but from some of the more specific Nasus that show us that it's permissible and it is not only permissible, that it is halal and that it is marhub, that it is something we should do if you have the ability to do so, if you have the knowledge to do so, that you should warn against ahl bidah, that you should warn against mistakes that people are doing and spreading throughout the deen of, uh, of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That is not from ghibah. So this is where the person who does not have Islamic knowledge, where they fall into this trap. Many people, they've uh, sent me messages, some people cursing me, some people, uh, uh, you know, calling me bad names and this and that and the other with no evidence. All of it is hoa. It benefits them not. Matter of fact, they gain sin and perhaps maybe Allah will get rid of some of my sins because of that. Because they didn't come in with barhan. This is what Allah says. Your Lord says, bring your evidence if you are truthful. When we spoke about those individuals and other individuals, we try our best to do it with dalil, not based on our desires, not based on our hawa. The Prophet ﷺ said in a Sahih Hadith, مَا أَظُنُّ فَلَانًا وَفَلَانًا يَعْرَفَانًا مِنْ دِينَنَا شَيْئًا Ruahu Bukhari. This is a Sahih Bukhari. If you believe, if you take Sahih Bukhari as your source, the Prophet ﷺ said, "I don't believe so and so and so and so know much from our religion." Are you calling the Prophet ﷺ a backbiter? He just spoke about he ﷺ spoke about someone, spoke about two individuals, saying that they don't have uh, knowledge about the religion. This is one of the evidence to show us when it's permissible to speak about others. And Latham and Sa'ad, one of the ruwat of this hadith, he said, هَذَانْ رَجَلَانْ كَانَا مِنَ الْمُنَافِكِينَ He said those two men were from the munafikin, from the hypocrites. One of the things the ulama say that they derive from this hadith, they say, Wujub tahdhir min ahla bid'a wa dalal, hatta la yaghtara amma bihim. That it is an obligation. One of the things derived that the people of ilm, wa fiqh, they take from this nas, this text, not from their desires, not because they love someone, not because they're afraid of speaking about someone, or they love to speak about someone, but they take it from the dalil of kitabi wa sunnah. And one of the things they derive from this hadith is that it is an obligation to speak about, speak against the people of bid'ah, of innovation, and misguidance. And that is in order that they do not deceive the general Muslims. And in another hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, he salawatu rabbi was salam wa alayhi said, وَأَمَّا أَبُوْ جَهَمْ فَالدَّرَّابُ لِلْنِسَى 
And he said, for as for Abu Jahm, that he is somebody who is very severe in beating the women. Is this backbiting? Ayyul Ahbab. We have to have fiqh fi deen before we speak with our tongues. So many people speak and they don't know anything about Islam. Nothing. Except for a few things that they read and a few sound bites they listened to on the YouTube. A few books that they half read. A few ayats that they read. They don't know anything about fiqh fi deen. Don't speak about it if you don't have knowledge. Go back to Ahlul Ilm. When is it permissible? When is it not permissible? So we have many evidences. The Prophet ﷺ himself, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi, warned against people who were making mistakes or who were uh, had fallen into uh, sinfulness. So here the Prophet ﷺ warned against what? Against a man who was very severe, Abu Jahm, in with the women and hitting the women. He alayhi salatu wasalam made it clear. So from this hadith is also evidence to show us that the of the permissibility to speak about uh, bid'ah and against ahla bid'ah and against the wickedness. And Imam Anawawi, as we said, Imam Anawawi, we didn't say Sheikh Anawawi. And I think we all accept that even those juhal, those ignorant people who speak without knowledge, they would accept Imam an nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala. May Allah bless him, forgive him of his any mistakes, and bless him with jannah for those. Imam an nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in his book, Riyadh Salihin, he entitled a chapter. It's called Bab Ma Yubah Min al -Ghiba. It's called the chapter of the permissibility of what is permissible from riba. So he named it riba. He even referred to it as riba, and we're trying to refrain from using that. But Imam Noawi, Imam Noawi, referred to it as when is it permissible riba? And riba, you're not doing it out of evil and spite. This is an act of ibadah. When is it first? Anyone who says that speaking against Ahlul Bida is riba and namima, they are totally ignorant of the religion. Because they would not have Bukhari and Muslim if it weren't for those muhaddithin and the ruat scrutinizing and being scrutinized about the chain of narrators uh, with regards to the hadith. Was, could they take a hadith from anyone? anyone? There was people who lied. There was people who cheated. There's people who had bid'ah. There's people who had bid'ah mukaffara. There's people who had all kind of things. And there are conditions for that. And the, the uh, transmitters of the, the hadith and the uh, Immata Hadith, those people who paid particular importance to a Hadith scholarship and the transmission of Hadith, they had to look at those people they were taking uh, their knowledge from and they criticized them and they spoke about them and warned against those people and, and threw away the narrations of those people who were not thiqa, those people who were not trustworthy, either in their adala and their trustworthiness or in their uh, you know, uh, the other criterion for uh, not taking from the narrators. So, Ayol Ahbab, we have to be cautious of speaking without knowledge. Some of the types of, of uh, ghibah, as Imam Nawawi referred to, when it's permissible, is when a person is being oppressed uh, to warn or to make their case to the judge or to the imam or to the leader about this individual who's oppressing them. So that's not ghibah, but that's making clear about the sin of this person who's oppressing you. Showing us again that there are times when it's permissible. And again, your intention has to be clear for the sake of Allah to get your haq and all the other uh, situations. Also, when uh, in order to refute uh, or to return a person who is sinful, an asi, ahl ma'asi, return them back to the haq, to leave away sinfulness. So sometimes it may be permissible in those situations to make their situation clear if it's going to return them back to the truth. If it's going to remove the harm that they're spreading. And likewise, as Imam Anoui said, and he mentioned other Types he mentioned also Tahdir Muslimin Minashar Wanasihatuhum. 
وَذَلِكَ مِنْ وُجُوبٌ This is the very the important part that we want to look at. Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala, he said also, it is to warn the Muslims from evil and from advising them. And we mentioned this in the beginning of our video about Yasir Qadi and uh, Nu'man. We mentioned that from the point of, uh, of giving advice to our brothers and sisters, especially those who are affected by their da'wah, and as a way of removing and preventing their, their, those e their mistakes from being spread in the community. That, that That's what we're talking about. Exactly what great imams like Imam Anoui were saying. And one of the things in which he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, وَمِنْهَا Meaning, and from the ways in which uh, you warn the community, إِذَا رَعَى مُتَفَقِّهَا يَتَرَدِّدُ إِلَى الْمُبْتَدِعَى O Fasak Yaqad Anhu Al Ain. So one of the ways is if a person who has the ability, they have the knowledge to do so. If they refute a person of innovation or sin of it, or, or, or sinfulness who uh, people take knowledge from out of a fear that this person, their harm will be spread throughout the community, then this is also one of the permissible times to make, uh, to speak about individuals. So Ayyul Ahbab, we have to learn, we have to remember that it's not about our desires. It's not about calling to ourselves. It's not even about everyone has to agree with me or agree with my group or agree with my friends or my what have you, my hizb. But in fact, you have to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to follow the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and realize it's an act of ibadah to warn against someone and that there are times when it becomes necessary. If people ask you about certain individuals and you know that they're sinful, so do we call that ghiba? That if a sister wants to marry a brother and she needs to know about his condition, this brother is divorced 27 sisters he beats his women he does this he commits adultery he does whatever of course we have to warn her she should have that knowledge prior if you have that knowledge if you're asked before she she uh, marries if she inquires about that that's very important and that's not from Ghiba that's from giving her her haq from her knowing what she's getting into and so that she is not harmed by uh, the evil of another individual. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Anything that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.